have such a vote of confidence toward um, Indigenous people and Indigenous storytelling to get behind uh, having a figure like that that people can hopefully look at and feel connected to or inspired by and and you know also hopefully that is represented in a way that is I think grounded and human and relatable. So guys, I saw Predator 5 yesterday, Prey. I don't know, they just can't seem to make up their minds what they want to call this film or how they want to market it. And I gotta tell you, man, this film was absolute cringe. Oh my God, where do I even begin? I mean, let's talk about the main lead, Amber Mid Thunder, really badass surname. She seems like a badass lady, especially on the screen. I, I love her on the screen. She's got a very beautiful presence about her. She looks like a biological woman. They haven't gone out of their way to make her unattractive, which I do appreciate. So thank you very much there, filmmakers. But oh my God, it is like watching Kate Diaz from Gears 4 and Gears 5. Unbearable, insufferable. I'm a Mary Sue. I know it all. She's absolutely irritating to the point she even disrespects her elder brother earlier on in the film where he's telling her a story about how he was fighting for survival her response oh, no, 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 no. tell me when i'm asleep no oh, yeah yeah when i when i need a bedtime story you can tell me that and i'll fall asleep so disingenuous i just wanted to Oh, I do not advocate violence against women, but on the screen, if that was me and I was a brother, I'd be like, bitch, you better pay attention to what I'm telling you because one day it's going to save your life. You got that? But oh my word, the actual story, there is no story set in 1719 because Jim and John Thomas, the people behind the screenplay for this movie, the creators of the original uh, Predator with Carl Weathers and Arnold Schwarzenegger, you don't get any kind of camaraderie in this film, no bro fist handshakes and pushing the pen jokes. Nope, it's just straightforward. We're a, a tribe of Comanche Indians, we're out in the wild this thing crashes above us and of course she has to see it. nobody else believes her which i find very strange in like in a frontier land like that if something is falling from the sky don't you think anybody else wouldn't see that it's a little bit strange it's like if you're going to nazare in portugal to film a surfing event are you telling me no one with cameras is going to spot a specific wave being caught at that moment in time well actually it did happen to a guy called andrew cotton so sorry andrew that i wasn't there to capture your beautiful moment my friend but oh my god this film ah oh, the violence seems very watered down like when there's a savage killing the camera quickly cuts away because oh, it's a disney film we can't have too much levels of bloodletting in this movie you got that you cannot have too much blood but it's okay to have ancient guns in the film that's fine no problem and oh my god if you haven't seen Predator 2, which at this stage is an absolute masterpiece of a movie. 1990, directed by Stephen Hopkins. And yeah, we have a, we had a diverse cast anyway, led by the great man himself, Danny Glover. That's a good film. I'm going to talk about that film in the future because the Predator 2, my God, Predators with Adrian Brody, another fantastic film, also directed by an Indian filmmaker. So there you go. If you're talking about diversity, which this film feels like it has to keep preaching to you every now and again we have white settlers on the land or should i say invaders probably a better way to phrase that uh, you could have thrown christopher columbus into the mix as an antagonist that would have been great to do you know do a bit of a an altern alternate version of history where we the native americans wipe him out and his whole clan that would have been interesting but this is a very very safe film folks this cgi is overdone it's overused you get cgi wolves bears i mean the bear scene is hilarious because 
You've seen in the trailer, right? The bear is coming towards Amber Mid Thunder's character. She throws a spear at it or something, and like she doesn't even make an effort to even try and aim and throw and kill this thing that's coming towards her. And you know, the only kind of training she does in the film is throwing a tomahawk from one tree to another and then back again. And even in that scene, you don't actually quite, you can't quite tell if it's a stunt woman or if it's the actress herself who's doing the throwing. It's really badly edited, this movie. The look of the, oh my God, don't even get me started on the look of the Predator. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I know they're going back to a, a primordial, a primeval look about the whole thing, but it's not Kevin Peter Hall's Predator Man, because the Predator's meant to have been around for centuries, right? So I don't know why it felt they, they felt they had to go with this version of it. I mean, why didn't they set, make this film in Japan? Feudal Japan, a Shogun Predator. That's what I wanted to see, Hollywood, and damn it, you didn't give it to me. I'm so pissed off and angry. I'll tell you who else is pissed off and angry the actual male members of the tribe. Uh, they don't like Amber Mid Thunder's character. Uh, she comes out hunting with them. One of the tribe members says to her, you know, you need to stay at home, bitch. You need to go cook for us, motherfucker. Nope, she wants to come along hunting, so. It would have been nice to have seen her being the homemade for a few moments and then she gets fed up and like, you know what? I want to go out hunting for this thing that I told them about, but they don't believe me. And it's just utterly ridiculous. It seriously is such a ridiculous movie. Uh, the best actor in the whole film is the dog. I mean, the male dog who's so smart, he catches on to what um, Amber Mid Thunder's character is telling him to do. And you know what? I mean, God, when you see the messaging in this movie, and they released a video on YouTube a few days ago and um, Amber Mid Thunder's talking about how she wants her character to be, you know, seen in a, in a different way that we've never seen before. But then again, you're kind of insulting people like Tia Carrera, who was in Relic Hunter in the early noughts, or maybe even the 90s, actually. And that was, no, it's actually the late 90s into the early noughts, and then he got cancelled. But my God, that show had a lot of spirit. Tia Carrera was just awesome. And nobody battered an eyelid that it was her, an ethnic female, in her own action-led TV show. It was a really good show. And speaking of streaming and TV, I'm glad Prey has only got released on Hulu. If it was released as a big cinematic movie, I doubt very much people will go and watch it because you know why? You're missing Joel Silver. You're missing Lawrence Gordon. Who? Who? Uh, those are the, like the two key producers of 90s and maybe the early noughts of action movies, uh, Speed, Executive Decision with Kurt Russell, to name a few. When you see those guys' names above those credits, you know you're in for a good time. You know, the other thing as well that I liked about Predator 2, you had like the, the sort of, um, I'm trying to think, the bravado standoffs. You had Robert Darby against Danny Glover, Danny Glover against Adam Baldwin, Danny Glover against Gary Busey. It was just like all these macho standoffs. Kit McCall to play Captain Pilgrim. He was another badass captain I liked as well in that sequel. But oh my God, I know this film is set in a different time, but you would have thought they might have gone for like a Jeremiah Johnson feel about it. But no, nope, they, don't, they don't even go there, man. Like there's no effort to make the land look lived in. It looks like a CW show, like poor CW. Every time we see a bad product now, it's like, ah, oh, which motherfuckers made a really bad TV show recently? Oh, that's right, it's CW. Let's just paint their veil all over this. And it's hilarious, man. It absolutely is just so hysterically bad to watch. Actors look too clean. I can't believe these have been land dwellers for quite a few years. It's like they suddenly got plopped out of a spaceship. They're on Earth, they're walking around, and it just makes not one ounce of sense. But you know what? I gotta say the best for last, folks. So there's a dick measuring contest going on between uh, the brother and sister of Amber Mid Thunder and Dakota Beavers. Yes, that is the actor's name. I'm not making it up. So uh, towards the beginning of the film, he brings home the head of a lioness that was terrorizing the Indians. But of course, much, much later on, they reverse that where Mid Thunder thunder brings home the head of the predator and she's holding it and everybody's applauding her 
What's very significant about this applause is that it all comes from women. There are no more men in the tribe. They've all been wiped out because they're all completely stupid. They're dumb. So I thought, oh, you know what? I'm just fed up on this down with the patriarchy shit. Why can't we be, be on e even ground? I don't understand it, man. It's just completely bonkers why Hollywood is going this, in this direction with movies. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. So pray from 2022, from a few days ago. It feels like I've spent the last few years of my life trying to get over this film and it just keeps haunting me. Do you, should you watch it? Watch it once. Forget it forever. Go back to the first two Predator films. I would even chuck in Predators. That's also a good film. And if you really want to punish yourself, maybe AVP. Leave it at that. Don't go any further. And then you'll be doing yourself a, a bit of, not an injustice, but you'll be doing yourself a favor by sticking to those movies. And that is it. But holy hell, man. Praise an absolute cringe fest. I don't know why this was green lit, and I hope, uh, well, it didn't get the same fate as Batgirl. What a shame, but you know, we got to see this film. And uh, yeah, I said the violence is very tame. Uh, there's weird messaging going on in the movie. If you've seen what I'm talking about, you know exactly what it is I'm referring to. And a female protagonist who doesn't spend a lot of time training in the film. It may, you know, she's kind of a pretender. Like, oh, look at me and my combat skills. How did you get your combat skills, love? Who taught you? I'm betting it's the men of the tribe, but you don't want to acknowledge them. Everything that you do is all done by you and you get all the glory and applaud it at the end while your dead brother is just... So on that one, folks, if I were you and if you were me, I would check out the next probably insufferable film review that comes your way. <laughs>